Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Garden Fever. This is uh, Corey Lefebvre. And today we're going to be talking about this beautiful plant behind us, the Chephora. Uh, it's more commonly known as the umbrella plant. Um, I refer to it as the mall plant because I see them in the malls all, all the time. But <clears throat> Anyway, it's a beautiful indoor plant that I wanted to kind of go over the, for this video. Um, it's real easy to grow. Um, it uh, um, has a wide variety of uses. You can either uh, bush it out or you can grow it tall like this one. I've got like three or four feet. I got it up to about the window size and then uh, I uh, cut the top off to stun its growth so it won't go any higher. But uh, they can actually get really quite high and quite big, especially in its natural environment. I grow it indoors in Utah. We're in zone six and it's too cold for it. It's a warm weather plant. So most of the United States and places in colder regions will um, grow it indoors, not uh, outdoors. Um, you need to be in, I believe zone 10 is its most ideal. It can be grown in like nine and 11 and 12, but uh, the bullseye is 10, zone 10 and it'll grow really well outside and in humid environments so like Florida and places like that. Uh, zones 9 you'd want to bring in in the colder months. Um, it doesn't do very well for cold so for most people in most places it, it's a better indoor plant so I'll, I'll focus most of my energy on that but I will give some tips for outdoors um, for those of you who might be growing it outdoors because it's a great scenery plant. It's a uh, great accent plant. Uh, um, you can use it in landscaping and, and whatnot and it's a very nice. It can get up to 15 feet tall um, if you grow it outdoors. Indoors, you look at maybe six feet on average. Um, obviously the bigger the pot and the more growing space and whatnot and how well you take care of it will kind of determine that. But <clears throat> You can also bonsai it. A lot of people bonsai um, the umbrella plant. Um, so they can be actually quite small too. So it's a multi-stemmed plant, so uh, which makes them kind of fun because they're really easy to grow. Um, they're not very complicated. In fact, the most complicated thing about it is actually uh, trying to propagate it. That's where it gets kind of complicated. It doesn't propagate very easily, but uh, with multi-stems, you can braid them. And you'll see that a lot in the bonsais where they'll, they'll do a nice little braid and then the top will kind of bush out and that's what gives it its umbrella name. Uh, in the wild, when it's kind of fighting for nutrients, the bottom leaves will fall off and then you'll get like a canopy up top and that's why it's called the umbrella tree. Um, it requires indoors, it requires uh, medium to, to high light but not necessarily direct light. So, I mean, it can handle some dull lighting. Um, this does not have direct light, but it does get some light that comes through on this side and kind of brightens up the room, and so it does real well. And I've actually started to braid mine, which uh, at the end of the video, I'll show you uh, what I've done to kind of start training it. So I want to braid it up, and I ended up cutting the top because it would continue to grow. It can get quite tall. But I just kind of wanted to extend it the size of the window, so I cut it, I finally cut it, and now it's just kind of bushing out and recovering from that because, I mean, it's kind of shocks the system. Uh, they are heavy feeders um, because of all the green foliage. Um, so you do kind of want to fertilize it uh, with indoor ones. You want to do it at least once or twice a year. It needs to kind of get a, a refreshed boost of nutrients. Um, however, I'm not doing a video on what I think is best for it. I'm just giving you a general idea that uh, you want to do that. When you grow it outside, um, where it can get really big, like up to 15 feet, or bush, bushed out really big up to like four to six feet wide, um, if you train it that way, um, you're looking at like three times a year. So they are kind of heavy feeders. So you want to compost or mulch or whatever you choose to do. Um, Water it thoroughly. Um, it can handle moist soils pretty good, and it can it, it, it does pretty well in humidity. 
and it uh, when you water it, let it dry out, and it can be neglected a little bit on the drying end. But if it's constantly saturated in water, it will get root rot, rot real easy and die. So you do want it to let it dry out. And if you neglect it and don't water it for a while, it can tolerate some dryness, but you know, before you start seeing effects. But uh, it's more weak on the end of watering than it is on drying. So with that, the pests, um, it has a uh, red mites and scale insects that tend to affect it. Um, high humidity will naturally kind of guard against that. Same with uh, obviously keeping it healthy will do that. So if you're indoors and you're in a dry area, like Utah is actually rather dry. Um, and if you want a kind of more of an expert tip, a humidifier will work well or misting it with spray bottles. Um, so they're manageable pests, but it, it, it is susceptible to that. So, uh, like I said, it's very versatile. versatile. You can uh, put it on a coffee table and just trim off that top, that main stem, just, just kind of stun its growth by cutting off the top, and then it kind of just bushes out. So you can kind of have like a bushy coffee table plant, or you can do it kind of like this and put it in the corner of your thing, and it'll go all the way to the ceiling. So it, it, they can get quite big. In fact, in the malls, you'll see them in those big old huge pots. And they'll have a couple of them and braid them together. And then they bush out. And it, it's a very beautiful plant. Um, they are poisonous. Um, when I say that, I don't mean like... I think people often misconceive that. Uh, it's not like you're going to... If, if you eat it, you're going to die. Um, it'll give you an upset stomach. Um, it's not good for cats or dogs. So if you got a cat and a dog that... Uh, likes to chomp on the plants, it might not be a good one to have because it'll upset their stomach. If they eat a lot of it, potentially you can die, but I think it's quite, quite rare. It's more of a really uncomfortable stomach ache and maybe vomiting, that kind of thing. And, uh, there are some people that are real sensitive to it and it can cause a rash too. So same with kids. They, it's, it's on the list of ones to look out for when you have babies and children because they just shove things in their mouths and it will upset their stomach if they get eat some of the leaves. So, um, There are multiple kinds. Um, the solid green ones like this, the one that I've got, are a little bit more cold hardy. They can handle cooler temperatures. Not a lot, um, but slightly. You know, but There are some that have yellow streaks through them. There's a name for that, I can't remember what it is, but uh, they tend to be a little bit more temperament where they got to be a little bit more specific environment, but uh, really not that hard to grow. These are pretty easy to grow, so. Um, the temperatures, uh, let's see, I believe it's about 59 degrees to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius is like the optimal range. It can handle hotter temperatures much better than colder temperatures. So just keep that in mind. Um, I think uh, the, the main thing you would need to look out for when it comes to temperatures in growing it indoors is if like there's a power outage and it's the dead of winter and your house suddenly drops to 40 degrees or whatever and it gets real cold, it, it could affect it and even kill it. Um, if there's no uh, um, a generator creating heat or whatever, or you go on vacation, they always encourage you to turn off your power when you're gone. Keep in mind that this kind of a plant, if there's a sudden change in temperature, especially lower, not necessarily hotter, but lower, <coughs> it, it can affect it. Um, like I said, it's not easy to propagate. You do it through cuttings. Um, at the growing tips, you want to cut it and then stick it in wet uh, soil and keep it moist until it has time to root. In, in a lot of my videos, I don't, for the experts, I encourage a growth hormone to, for the roots. Uh, this is one where it's probably necessary. It's very finicky. It doesn't propagate very easily. So uh, you're going to want to, even the rookies, if you're, if, you're, if you're thinking of propagating this through cuttings and not just going to the store and buying a, one that a professional has done. 
uh, you're going to want to dip dip the end in a growth hormone because you're most likely not going to succeed if, if you don't. Um, very, very particular. So it does flower. It's not known for the flowering. And when you grow it indoors, you're probably not going to, you're not going to see a whole lot of flowers if ever. But it uh, blooms a very, very kind of like a reddish flower. It's on a spike. It's really quite pretty. And uh, I'll try and find some fair use pictures when I get to the editing stage so that we can, uh, you can see them. So for those of you that grow them outdoors though, in its more natural environment, you'll see it more often. And it, it can be quite pretty. Um, it's very odd looking. In fact, there's another nickname that it goes by and that's the octopus plant. And it's because of the flower. Um, but most people grow it indoors. It's more popular indoors. <clears throat> um, it, um, let's see, uh, it's native to Taiwan. Um, it, uh, let's see, it's, uh, yeah, making sure I've gone over all my stuff here. Yeah, four to six feet apart if you're planting it outside. Um, any closer and you're gonna, you're gonna run into bump rooms. It can be a beautiful walkway plant or to accent a, a blank wall or to put behind smaller plants if you're going to do some landscaping with it. This is if you're growing it outside. Uh, one popular method is to put it in between um, palm trees. So you get palm tree, palm tree, and then right in between you put one of these and it, it can complement it very well. Uh, bonsai, it's more of an expert thing. Uh, I have had one that I bonsai for years and then I moved and in the transporting of, move, of moving it, it died. So bonsais are, I think, are more expert. If you're interested in any kind of tips when it comes to bonsai, uh, email me. I'll leave it in the description below, and I'll just give you some information. We won't go too too much into it in the video, but anyway, it's a very beautiful plant, and uh, I'll bring the camera up close so you can see the visuals, and I can show you kind of how I'm starting to train it to braid it, um, and I'll give you an update over time as. As the branches grow, I'll braid them in between each other so they kind of wind around and spiral all the way up is kind of what I'm doing. So I'll give you an update. But uh, anyway, this is Cory Fever with Garden Fever, uh, another wonderful household plant to grow. And Oh, and one other thing, we're in the dead of winter and uh, I planted a golden sage out in my yard. And I wanted to share with you, so at the end of the video I'll show you because it's not pertaining to this video, but you got to check this out. I can't believe how cold hardy this plant is. We've had weeks of single degree temperatures, up to two to three feet of snow for weeks and weeks now. And uh, enough of the snow has melted away that it exposed it and it's perfectly green and healthy. So I wanted to just kind of show it off a little bit. Maybe I'll do a video this summer on, on sage and that particular type of sage because I can harvest it and I can make teas out of it. I can do whatever I want, you know, and I just thought it was really cool. So I kind of wanted to kind of throw that into this video and I'll do it at the end. Um, but anyway, I live with, I guess I'll get to the point of showing you and check this out. So yeah, if you come over here, I'm gonna give you some visuals. them off right here and I'm just kind of braiding it around this center stem here it's kind of hard to see maybe if I turn it around you can kind of see how I'm starting to wind it and take these offshoots and just kind of entwine them all the way up as they go up and spin it around so that I can uh, make this cool little plant I mean it's coming along and I've had it for a couple of years now and as you can see, it's a good three to four feet, and I might transplant it this summer and put it in a slightly bigger pot. Um, but as you can see, it's a single, I got a, a single stem, but when I cut it, all these offshoots kind of started coming out, so I can, can braid it. So I cut it all the way up here. I don't know if you can see that, but... Anyway, the Schefflera plant, umbrella plant, it's a great house plant, very beautiful. And until next time.
Hello everyone, this is Corey Lefevre with uh, Garden Fever again. Just want to point out that it's uh, middle of January. We haven't had a fresh snowfall in a while, but uh, it's been really cold. We've gotten quite a bit, a few feet in the beginning part of the new year. And I wanted to point out this uh, sage, this, uh, I believe it's golden sage. Yeah, golden sage. It's a perennial. It's green. We've had a couple of weeks with uh, single digit temperatures and look at this. I can use this. Doesn't get as much snow underneath this tree, this pine tree. Obviously you can see the cones or the pine needles, but uh, so it didn't get buried super deep, but there was a point where it was above it and I can totally use this. So I just thought it was cool. I wanted to share it with everyone how sage is a very cold hardy, at least some species. I have one in the back that isn't doing as good. It's definitely gone into hibernation for the winter. But uh, over here I have one too. Same thing. Super green. Totally can use this. And this is a Begarten sage. It's a non-GMO sage. Same thing. I mean, look at this. This, this is totally usable. So anyway, just a quick interjection how uh, cold hardy this sage is. This is an herb that uh, I recommend. I mean, here I am in January and I can harvest this. Anyway, uh, back, back to it.